Hello and welcome back to a new explosions and fire, uh, extractions and iron, <laughs> sorry, uh, project. What we're going to do is we're going to try and get lithium from batteries. If you type lithium from batteries um, into YouTube and probably all down the sidebar, there's a very common video and that's getting lithium from these type of batteries. Because these batteries happen to contain pure lithium metal rolled up inside. It's quite a reasonable amount too. It's not a very difficult extraction. All you have to do is break the steel ca uh, the steel casing here um, and then pull it out. I mean you can do it nicely for, you know with finesse but I just get some bolt cutters, cut it, pull it out, chuck it in oil. So that works. It's relatively expensive. These batteries are quite expensive um, and you know it's not you know technically difficult is what I'm saying. The more common battery is um, a phone battery here. This is this is a lithium ion battery. Now these batteries don't contain lithium, pure lithium metal, obviously, um, as you as you might be aware. They contain lithium ions. Um, similar um, lipo batteries, lithium polymer batteries contain lithium and some sort of organic mess, which I don't really know what it is. The reason they use lithium is that it is a you can carry a single charge and is also very light. Um, if you use sodium, sodium has a molecular weight of about 22, 23, whereas lithium has a molecular weight of about 7. So um, it's very advantageous to use lithium as opposed to sodium, even though lithium is quite a lot harder to mine and that sort of thing. You could argue that um, there are higher charge density ions out there, such as beryllium, for example, but there's quite a large multiple reasons, um, subtle reasons why lithium is a lot better, mainly because it's a single point charge rather than magnesium or beryllium is because it's got two charges they're not sort of equal weighted in terms of um, the electrochemistry and plus beryllium is a terrible element um, and they wouldn't put a beryllium in a home um, device because it's just too toxic so this here is a pretty standard run-of-the-mill phone battery they're getting better all the time but this one here says it is um, 1500 milliamps 1500 milliamp hours um, that's that's how um, you judge a battery on its milliamp hours. So how much lithium does this contain? Well, according to my research, you times the milliamp hours by 0.3, um, or the amp hours by 0.3, to get the amount of lithium in grams in the battery, because the amount of lithium is proportional to the amp hours, because that's the thing carrying the charge. So 1,500 um, milliamp hours corresponds to about 0.4 of a gram of lithium. So 0.4 of a gram of lithium is not very much and is quite hard to extract. However, I do happen to have an anonymous contact who wishes to remain anonymous who managed to get me a whole lot of phone batteries. So thanks Dano for that. This one here is 2,500 milliamp hours, which I think is the biggest. This is 1,400. I think it goes down to about 800, some of the older batteries. All up, I have here 23,600 milliamp hours of battery, um, which corresponds to about 7.1 grams of lithium, which is just a little bit over a mole of lithium, which is, um, you know, one mole is quite a lot of a substance. So how are we going to extract the gooey insides of these batteries and free the lithium ions within? Well, I have a theory, I have a plan, but it is as intricate and precise as a well-played game of chess. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, torch the battery until it explodes. Um, and what's this going to do is it's going to um, convert everything down to its oxides, or um, in the case of the plastics, just hopefully burn it off. Um, and then once we got, I don't know what compounds are in there, what metals and stuff, but once everything's down, back down to its oxides or like carbon or whatever, we can run some distilled water through it and the lithium oxide will dissolve um, and then anything else in there shouldn't be soluble in water. So um, I don't know how violently the batteries are going to explode so I've just got one here and we're going to turn on the, the, the hot plate and hopefully the flames um, survive all this wind. For the record I do know that it says not to pierce or uh, burst these batteries or to heat them so there's probably a reason for that. All right, I've attempted to move out the wind a little bit because it was just not heating up very well in all that wind. Um, and there was a metal plate on the back here, which I took off. We can see this, that's where all the stuff is in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that over again um, and crank back up the heating and hopefully this time uh, something actually happens. 
Back you go. That was one cell. Maybe they're both connected. I'm sure they are. All right, let's have a look at the scraps here. So we have a lot of copper metal sheets, which is very interesting. What else do we have? We have some other bits of metal here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what this metal is. I think it's metal. It could be a plastic, but it feels like it's a bit of metal, really light, so it's probably an aluminium. And then we've got a whole lot of this black crap here. In terms of how successful our method was for actually getting the stuff out, well, uh, it wasn't very good at all. In fact, I think heating it and making the cells burst like that is really not a good way at all. Like, we turn this battery, the cells are in there, into, you know, these stuff like this. So, at least now I know that there's a whole lot of stuff like these metal sheets and that sort of thing that I can peel off the batteries just get the, these two metal cells inside them and then see if we can open up the cell and get all this stuff out without having to heat them for ages and let them explode on their own because that was <laughs> less than optimal. Now that I know what I'm doing that was pretty quick to, to easily get those cells out of there. Now I guess I'll try and cut these see if we can get everything out without it um, short circuiting and exploding on its own possibly. It took too long to open that battery and I didn't really like doing it so I'm going to do a much more irresponsible thing and use a power tool to try and open a battery. Full facial protection. Actually you know what? I'm going to clamp that. So I've cut the uh, the metal shell on all of these enough that um, we should be easily able to peel that metal shell back and reveal the delicious lithium within. I'm gonna let them all cool down though because they, they smell really bad and I'm worried they're still gonna explode. The first one I cut open really smoked like crazy and uh, looked like it was gonna burst into flames or explode, but none of the others were like that. I thought they were all gonna be like that, but I, I assume it's it's based on charge, then if they're still really fully charged, I guess they can short circuit and overheat really easily. Really, only the first one <laughs> seemed to be charged, which was great because it made them cut them all a lot easier because you didn't have to like do a small cut, wait for it to like all the heat to fuck off and then come back and do the rest of the cutting I could just go and do it all at once. I churned through this I thought this was going to take me all day it took me like 15 minutes man. So I managed to take the steel casing this is steel casing off the uh, off the battery I let it cool down because it was very hot still smells a little weird there was definitely like some sort of organic liquid pissing out of it, it smells oh, I can't really pick it up by smell kind of a little bit estery like not fruity but yeah, a bit more synthetic. So we should be able to now just unwrap this electrode. That's my hope anyway. All right. Well, this is plastic. I'll throw this out. This is definitely plastic. So these are the two kind of electrodes inside the battery. So we have something on copper and something on a material I think might be aluminium but might be a kind of a plastic it's very very hard to tell this black stuff i believe is a material called lithium cobalt oxide which is an amazing material it's made up of rows of cobalt and oxygen and then in between those rows lie the lithium atoms and it's because the lithium atoms are between these rows the lithiums can kind of go through the material and that's what makes it um, useful in this and it was discovered in the 1980s by um, John Good Good Enough and every single year he gets robbed for the Nobel Prize so he'll win it one day assuming he stays alive long enough so what we really have to do is we have to get this black material into solution and separate lithium from cobalt so how do we go about separating lithium from cobalt well I have two ideas so we have the mix of 
lithium and cobalt ions in solution. So if we react this with an acid, any acid, it should bring both the lithium and the cobalt into the solution. So that's not an issue. But after we bring them both into solution, we react it with hydrogen sulfide. That'll precipitate out cobalt sulfide um, as a very insoluble solid and leave us just with lithium ions in solution. I could possibly do it with carbon dioxide, but I'm not sure it would work so well. This, of course, has a disadvantage. We have to work with hydrogen sulfide, which isn't that pleasant to work with. I like it in a method because it's it's alkali metal free. There's no sodium or potassium ions used in this synthesis at all. So assuming we start with pure lithium, we really end up with um, like pure lithium in the sense that there's no sodium or potassium contamination. The next method involves us adding some potassium hydroxide and that precipitates out the cobalt hydroxide as quite an insoluble solid once again and we end up with potassium and lithium in solution. The idea then once we have potassium ions and lithium ions in solution we can push the pH up a bit with um, hydrochloric acid, boil it to dryness so we both have potassium chloride and lithium chloride and then we use ethanol to extract the lithium chloride because lithium chloride is quite odd in the sense that it has quite a high solubility in ethanol whereas potassium chloride, sodium chloride, they all basically completely insoluble in ethanol. So that will allow us to isolate the lithium by itself by using dry ethanol to extract that. Man, I still have all of these to go. Oh, I've got so much rubbish and everything already. Man, it's taking ages. It took ages, but I managed to strip all the black stuff on the copper and presumably aluminium away from all the plastic and outer casings. So this is quite a large pile of absolute shit, you know. So it's amazing how much they can wrap up in these tiny batteries. Maybe if we just put in some distilled water and boil it, maybe all this black shit We'll, which is what we want, we'll just fall off the electrodes when it's all, you know, in hot water and then we can just pull out these big long sheets and that'll leave the copper metal and aluminium metal intact. I don't really care too much about the aluminium but the copper's nice um, and then and then we can just have this shit black suspension which we can then process. Just mashing this huge mass of stuff down but we can see that it is kind of working already without too much heating. You see that, see that liquid is all um, just suspended with all the black shit, which is what we want. And you can see when wet, this black stuff just scrapes off the electrodes pretty easily. Working kind of well, but what I have here is actually an ultrasonic cleaner, which I think will work really well in just like shaking the stuff off. I don't use this very often, um, quite often because I forget I have it. Well, I mean, it's my dad's, it's not mine. I, I have no reason to buy this. But he occasionally uses it for like cleaning stuff. Both of us don't really like using it because it makes the most godforsaken noise ever. I don't know if it will come through on the camera, but man, it's so high pitched and just grating and ugh. We're just going to put it through this funnel. Hopefully the funnel catches anything big. Well, this is hard to do with one hand. Alright, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think it's time to split this into two episodes. Because uh, we've done a lot of stuff. Uh, and so what we have here is we have lithium cobalt oxide suspended in water. Hopefully it settles out so we can just reduce the volume. And, you know, we didn't get all of it, but we got pretty much most of it you know, 90% I'd, I'd say. We've separated the lithium cobalt oxide from the electrodes. So um, next time we can just go about chemically separating the lithium from the cobalt. We don't have to worry about too much more physical <laughs> separation. Thanks for watching. And if you have any, any comments, you know, I'm, I, I do this, you know, I edit things as I go through a project and upload them. So if you have any thoughts or things I should do, you know, currently, as I'm working on the project currently as you're watching this video. So if you have any thoughts, things you want me to test, um, better ways of doing things, feel free to comment them because I do take them into consideration. I read everything. Hopefully it all goes all right from here. Thanks for watching.